everything that we farm and everything that we bring in is organic. And it's really important for us to be using organic farming, regenerative farming practices. The natural habitat here would be oak woodlands with some chaparral on these more exposed hillsides. We have a lot of different soils in Napa. We have all these some different microclimates and so you have a lot of variety with grapes and wine and, and also what we need to do to take care of them organically. Everything's totally different site by site. We're not organic by neglect. We're actively trying to design a system that's self sustaining and so that's why we plant intentional cover crop we plant intentional hedgerows and we time things to work with the vineyard ecology agroecology we get our fertility from our cover crop and we know that the vector for red blotch overwinters as an adult and reproduces in the spring so if we take our cover crop down before spring starts so we're not giving it a place to reproduce so we don't need to overcompensate and just have no cover crop. We just have to know where we have that particular pest when we need to terminate our cover crop so that we don't allow it to reproduce on our cover crop. Where we have excessive vigor or ripening issues or the vines are growing a little too much, we for sure, we, that's where we plant perennial grasses so that we, we can compete with the vines. Like California brome or blue wild rye are very competitive and they bring the vigor down. And it's also great because then we're not tilling where we have weak vines, we're planting a, a good winter cover crop, vigorous cover crop with legumes and grains, oats and bell beans and peas, and we'll till that in in the spring so that we get green manure. We're trying to create a functional ecosystem that sort of takes care of itself so that we don't even notice the pests and don't have to think about the pests because the whole place is in balance. That's the, the overall goal. The plants that we choose are hedgerow plants that are sort of known for having the right type of flowers for small little parasitic wasps and the different types of beneficial insects and we kind of narrow down five or six plants that work really well and then it's the timing of when they bloom so they eat, they're blooming through the whole summer. We do a lot of toy on and we love California buckwheat. We love uh, Santa Barbara sage. We also use manzanita in the hedgerows more for the beauty. And then we definitely use coyote brush in all of our hedgerows. It's an overwintering habitat for an agris. That's a parasitic wasp that manages our leafhopper populations. We started working with a group of growers around 2007. They were experimenting already with both hedgerows, things outside of the vineyard, but also ground covers both in the winter and in the summer within the vineyard. We began to try to evaluate different summer flowering cover crops for attracting beneficial insects to enhance biological control of leafhoppers. This is the primary pest that they wanted to know how to manage with habitat diversification. The anagris parasitoids can parasitize something like 60 uh, leafhopper eggs. The key to leafhopper biocontrol is to have these parasitoids in your vineyard early in the season. Having identified the summer flowering ground covers that seemed like they would work, we did a uh, multi-year replicated study. We looked at the parasitoid populations in the vine canopy uh, and saw that there was really no difference. And as we looked at those data sets, we saw that just inherently some vineyards had a lot of biocontrol, others had very little. Leafhopper biocontrol kind of didn't seem to do anything with the presence of the ground covers as much as it did just the location of the vineyard. Seeing that there was something about the geography of these vineyards that seemed to drive these anagris populations, we analyzed our data relative to the amount of natural habitat within half a kilometer of the vineyard. So what we saw was that vineyards that were in more diverse landscapes had higher populations of these anagris parasitoids earlier in the season. That led to higher early season parasitism rate, which then led to lower late season leafhopper populations. And so at the end of the day, if you're just thinking about leafhopper biocontrol, the flowering summer ground covers aren't as important as the presence of suitable overwintering habitat. Coyote brush was a never before documented overwintering host of these Nagras parasitoids. It's not only being used as an overwintering habitat, it's actually used by these parasitoids over the entirety of the growing season. Our philosophy is that we farm at a profit, and so that means that we need to make use of all of the land that we're farming. Every farm has little strips of space that aren't used, along a fence line, along a driveway, along a ditch, and rather than it be a management headache, it 
it's an asset for bringing stability into your farm. This work to develop ecologically based pest management practices is super important. It is a way to simultaneously promote conservation in agriculture, to lower pesticide use, and, and overall to improve the environmental quality of crop production in California, which has positive impacts on, on farmers, farm workers, rural communities, consumers. We're sitting here next to this vineyard, just absolutely loaded with grapes. It's gonna make phenomenal wine. The birds are flying through it. I saw a dragonfly flying through it. We have our flowering plants at the base of the vines. It's just buzzing and humming, and it's just beauty. It doesn't get any better.